Wow, look at all the candy. Now this is what I call a really sweet servant project. You're welcome. What's that supposed to mean? It, that's supposed to mean it was my idea, so you're welcome. Of course it was your idea. You have such a sweet tooth. Don't mind if I try one myself. Just want to be certain they're good to eat, of course. Hey, hold on. Remember, we're not sucking these eggs for us. They're for other people. Anyone in the community would like to join us. Anyone can come. Why can't they just be for our church? How can we be called the welcoming church if we don't welcome everyone? I don't know. I'm just not comfortable. Anyone and I'm just not comfortable anyone and everyone. I I just like to hang with people who are like me. You know, we have more in common. Maybe we could have more in common with other people than you think. How's that? Our families are about to share the story of the Holy Week in Israel. Let's see what the story has to say. This is a story of love and grace, mercy and forgiveness for all people. This is a story of God's promises kept. This is the story of a God who slipped into our skin and came down to earth to show us the heart of God and to save us, all people, God's beloved children. It wasn't fair that an innocent person would suffer, be convicted, be crucified. It wasn't fair, just or easy, but in this story, the heart of God is revealed and we are redeemed. Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Passover, a time when God saved his people from those who meant them harm many years before. As they were approaching Jerusalem, Jesus turned to two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you'll find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. And if anyone says, Why are you doing this? You just tell them, The Lord needs it, and he will send it back immediately. We will go, Lord. Let's hurry and do as our Lord has commanded. It has been a long journey, and it will be good to share a meal and have some rest. They went away and found a coat tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What is going on here? What are you doing? Are you trying to untie that colt? Our Lord has commanded us to do this. Oh, well then fine. Do as the Lord has commanded. So they took the colt to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on it and Jesus sat on it. Jesus began to enter the city of Jerusalem. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they cut in the fields. And then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna to the King! Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna to the King! Not everyone was so happy about Jesus and how popular he was with the people. Sadly, many of the high priests and the scribes wanted to get rid of Jesus. He didn't always agree with what they taught the people. Jesus' heart was filled with love and grace. The priests and scribes wanted to be in charge and weren't happy that the people followed Jesus, believing him to be the Son of God. The leaders' hearts were jealous and they wanted Jesus out of the way. They wanted him to die, but they were afraid that if they hurt him, the people would have an uprising. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas, saw an opportunity to make money, so he went to the high priest to betray Jesus. What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? We'll give you 30 pieces of silver. They paid Judas so that he would betray Jesus with a kiss. Sometimes we are like Judas. We betray Jesus by making choices that do not reflect we are his beloved children. Jesus forgives us just like he forgave Judas. If Jesus can forgive us, we need to forgive ourselves and continue to treasure the gift of life God has given us.
festival of the Passover was near. Jesus sent two of his disciples and said, go into that city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Then follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of that house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you to a large room upstairs. It will be all furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and they went into the city and they found everything just as he had told them. And then they prepared the Passover meal. While Jesus and the disciples were gathered to share the Passover meal, Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and wrapped a towel around his waist. He poured water into the basin and began to wash his disciples. The disciples, Simon Lord. Peter, was very confused. Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You should not be doing that. You are my Lord. Simon Peter objected at first, but Jesus did wash his feet. Jesus knew Peter would soon deny knowing him. Thank you, Lord. After Jesus washed their feet, he sat back down at the table and shared a very important lesson with them. If I can wash your feet, you can wash other people's feet. Jesus wants us to love and care for others just as God loves and cares for us. Jesus was a different kind of Lord and King. He was a servant king who shared love and grace. Jesus wants us to serve and care for others just as he did. Jesus knew sad things would happen later that evening. He shared one of the disciples he shared one of the disciples would betray him, and one would say he never knew Jesus. They were confused and surprised to hear this sad news. They didn't understand all that would happen was a part of God's plan. Eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, broke it, blessed it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sin. This holy meal is still shared by Christians today. We experience God's love, grace, and forgiveness in this holy meal. We, can, we call this meal Holy Communion. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. After they shared the meal, Jesus asked them to go with him to a place where he could pray. Jesus was feeling afraid because he knew things were going to become very sad, scary, and painful for him. He knew his Father in Heaven would help him to do what he needed to do. And he needed his friends to stay awake a bit longer and be with him while he prayed to his Father for help. And so they left the upper room and went to the Garden of Gethsemane so Jesus could pray. Jesus told some of the disciples to sit in a special place in the garden to wait for him while he prayed. Then he took Peter, James, and John with him to the place where he would pray. He told them he was frightened and asked them to please stay awake with him. Two times the disciples fell asleep, even after Jesus asked them to stay awake. Jesus felt sad. Jesus needed his friends to be with him, just like we need our friends to be with us. Sometimes we feel sad and disappointed by others, just like Jesus felt about the disciples. Sometimes other people feel sad and disappointed by the things we say and do or don't say or do. Jesus wants us to share love, grace, and forgiveness, just like Jesus did. Jesus prayed to his Father for help. He knew his Father would be with him always, and that gave him courage. He knew the time had come, and as he was talking with his disciples, Jesus, the disciple who betrayed Jesus, came towards him. Soldiers followed Jesus and watched as he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. The soldiers grabbed Jesus and told him he was arrested. He 
leader tried to stop them. He took out his sword and cut off the soldier's ear. Jesus told him it was not right to hurt the soldier. And Jesus healed him. The soldier bound Jesus and took him away to the high priest, Caiaphas. The disciples ran away. Peter and another disciple followed Jesus at a distance. While Jesus was taken to the high priest, they sat by a fire in the courtyard, hoping they might see how Jesus was. Some people recognized Peter as one of Jesus' followers. Aren't you one of his disciples? I am not. This man was also with him. I do not know him. Surely this man was with him. He's one of the Galileans. Look, I do not know what you're talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him earlier that evening. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. Peter walked away. He was so sad that he could not stop crying. People lied to the high priest about Jesus, and they accused Jesus of blasphemy, not showing proper respect to God. They didn't believe that Jesus was God. Peter was afraid, and he denied knowing Jesus. Yet Jesus chose Peter to be the rock of the church. Sometimes we are like Peter. Sometimes we are afraid to share what we believe in Jesus. Sometimes we are afraid to stand up for what we know is right. Still, Jesus chooses to share God's love in our world. Priests and elders gathered together to plot against Jesus. They wanted Jesus to die, but they wanted someone else to take responsibility for that decision. They bound and beat Jesus and took him to appear before the governor Pontius Pilate. When Judas learned that Jesus was condemned, he was very sorry and wanted forgiveness. He tried to return the 30 pieces of silver to the high priests but they considered it blood money. They decided to use the money for a burial place for foreigners. God would forgive Judas, but he could not forgive himself and he took his own life. Are you king of the Jews? You say so. My kingdom is not of this world. For I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? Pilate didn't understand that Jesus was the truth, the Son of God who would give his very life for everyone, including Pilate. Pilate sensed that Jesus had done nothing wrong, that the high priests were jealous of Jesus and wanted him to die. It was a custom that during the festival of the Passover, a prisoner was released. Pilate decided to offer the priests and the crowd who had gathered together the choice of releasing Jesus, who had done nothing wrong, or releasing the criminal, Barabbas. Much to the surprise of Pilate, the people wanted to free Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Three times, Pilate tried to convince the people that he could not find anything wrong that Jesus had done. And three times the people shouted, Crucify, crucify him! Crucify him. him! When Pilate realized he could do nothing to save Jesus, he took some water and washed his hands and said, I am an innocent of this man's blood. See it for yourself. Then the soldiers took Jesus. They stripped him and beat him. They put a scarlet robe on him and made a crown out of thorns and put it on his head and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spit on him and beat him. Then they took off the robe and put his clothes back on him and led him away to be crucified. Jesus was beaten and exhausted. 
He struggled and stumbled, trying to carry that heavy wood cross. Along the road, they came across a man named Simon from Cyrene, and they made him carry Jesus cross to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. It was about nine o'clock in the morning. High on the hill, there were three crosses. Jesus' arms were stretched out wide on that cross. They nailed his hands and feet to the cross that was in the middle. They put a sign above the cross because they wanted to make fun of Jesus. The sign read, the King of Jews. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't understand what they are doing. Ha, huh. what kind of king is he hanging there on that cross? If he really was a king, he'd save himself. King of the Jews, that's a joke. They really thought that Jesus was a king, the kind of king they understood. Jesus could save himself. Uh, and indeed, Jesus could have. Jesus chose to stay on the cross and save them, us and all people. From noon until 3 p.m., great darkness covered that place. Jesus was thirsty, and they gave him sour wine to drink. Jesus cried to his father for help. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At three o'clock, Jesus spoke these words to his Father in heaven. Into your hands I command my spirit. And then Jesus breathed his last breath. Suddenly the earth began to shake like an earthquake. The temples torn in two. People were very frightened and began to run. What's happening here? That's scary. Surely this man is the son of God. <laughs> Jesus was nailed to that cross. Arms stretched out just like Jesus was giving a big hug to, embracing all humanity. Even as Jesus breathed that last breath, Jesus forgave those who had put him to death. Jesus wants to love us and embrace all humanity as well. A wealthy man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a follower of Jesus, went to Pilate to ask if he might place Jesus' body in a tomb he owned that was in a nearby garden. Pilate agreed. Joseph wrapped Jesus' body in clean cloth, placed the body in the tomb, and rolled a large rock to cover the opening to the tomb. Many women were there, including Jesus' mother. Because the Sabbath was about to begin, the woman would have to wait to care for Jesus' body with special oils and spices. The high priest asked Pilate to have soldiers guard Jesus' tomb so no one could remove his body and claim he had risen from the dead. Pilate agreed. Everyone except the soldiers left because it was the, the Jewish Sabbath. and got ready to make their way to the tomb where Jesus was laid to rest. Hurry, we must go and care for our Lord's body. It has been three days since he died. How will, however, will we roll away that faint stone at the tomb at the tomb's entrance? There are three of us. Somehow we'll manage. Much to their surprise, when they arrived at the tomb, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. Look, the stone has been rolled away, and the soldiers are gone. Let us go and care for our Lord's body. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting to the side. Where is our Lord? The women were very afraid. The young man, an angel, said to them, Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was cru crucified. He has been raised just as he told you he's not here. Look, 
there's a place they laid him. He has been raised. He is not dead. Our Lord is alive. Yes. Yes. Now tell Peter and the disciples the good news. And tell them to go to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. You must, must find the disciples and tell them, Jesus is risen from the dead. He's alive. So the three women, women left to find the disciples. They were filled with joy and fear because they didn't understand what had happened. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings, my beloved. It was Jesus. He is alive for sure. They worshipped him and then they sent him. And then he sent them to tell the disciples the good news. Jesus is risen! He is alive! Jesus is risen! He is alive! Hallelujah! Jesus is risen! Hallelujah! He is risen! It isn't fair that Jesus, our Savior, and isn't an innocent person, should suffer, be convicted, be crucified. Just like it isn't fair or just or right that anyone should be excluded or treated differently just because we see them as different. Right on. And now I see what we all have you in common. We have a God who created us and loves us all, purely and unconditionally. God doesn't want us to judge. God wants us to love like Jesus, to see all people, to treat all people as God's beloved children. And to stand up, to speak up, to take action, and to make certain people, all people, are treated equally, feel safe, appreciated, respected, and loved. We better get busy feeling those eggs. We could have quite a crowd coming, and we sure want to make everyone welcome. And have enough treats for them, too. I have a feeling if we make it our business to help everyone feel welcome, accepted, and loved, well, that might just be good enough. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Peace are blessings, peace and love to all people. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to slip our, into our skin and live among us, to show us the heart of God. For God so loved the world, he endured ridicule, suffering, pain, and the torture and shame of crucifixion, and he had done no wrong. For God so loved the world, he stretched his arms out on the on that cross and embracing all humanity for all times. He gave his very life that we might live forever with him.